channeled frustration is how we can describe the recent actions of one Scottish warrior, Drew McIntyre. The SmackDown locker room has felt the wrath of McIntyre firsthand, and last week the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes inserting himself, trying to do one good by Ilya Dragunov and save Tyler Bate from a beatdown. Unfortunately, Cody Rhodes was left looking up at the lights, which leads us to tonight, right here in Baltimore. Cody Rhodes has got Gunther to worry about at SummerSlam. I don't know if this is the matchup that he would have wanted, but Rhodes gets McIntyre nonetheless later tonight in your main event on SmackDown. And also tonight, Chad Gable continuing to find his way towards challenging Carmelo Hayes for the United States Championship. You got to believe a victory for Alpha Academy tonight would put him at the front of the line. Tag team action still to come here in Baltimore. We are live from the CFG Bank Arena on the road to SummerSlam, Saturday night, August the 17th. And kicking things off, the former Cruiserweight Champion of the World, JD McDonough who I'm sure has an ace up his sleeve to find his way back to gold. Well, J.D. McDonough, as we mentioned, the former Cruiserweight Champion of the World, falling short to the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, less than two weeks ago at Money in the Bank in London, England. From what we understand, J.D. McDonough wanted Tyler Bay in a rematch tonight for the Cruiserweight Championship, but as you just saw, and if you tuned into SmackDown last week, Tyler Bay obviously in no condition to fight here tonight after the events of SmackDown seven nights ago in the ring with Drew McIntyre. But SmackDown management sending J.D. McDonough to the ring tonight. Nonetheless, McDonough looking to get back his Cruiserweight Championship. Tonight could be the first step. The Irish Devil always has an ace up his sleeve, and tonight, as we mentioned, could be one step closer for J.D. McDonough to once again challenging for the gold that he was so desperate to obtain in the first place. Gotta wonder who SmackDown management has pinned against J.D. here tonight. Oh, well, it looks like Baltimore is getting a treat for the Bruiserweight. It is fight night here on SmackDown. The Bruiserweight Butch walking down the aisle to go one-on-one -on -one at the Irish Ace, J.D. McDonough. This is a very interesting contest. Butch has really, just in the last few weeks, started to carve out his own niche once again by himself outside of the Brawling Brutes. Took down his own mentor, the Celtic Warrior Sheamus, two weeks ago in London, England to qualify for the Money in the Bank ladder match just 24 hours later. Butch, of course, coming up short in the race to the finish line, climbing the ladder to try to obtain that briefcase two weeks ago. But nonetheless, the Bruiserweight looking to continue, excuse me, to march down his own path here on SmackDown. Should be a hell of a matchup to kick things off. We want to remind you about No Nation Gaming channel memberships. You can click the Join button down below or click the link up in the cards to join today and receive access. Receive your golden ticket, if you will. So a WWE live event going down on Saturday night, August the 10th, on the road to SummerSlam. WWE Champion CM Punk, among many others from Raw and SmackDown, set to be in the house. The only way to tune into that live event, as we mentioned, is becoming a No Nation Gaming channel member. Nonetheless, we are kicking things off on SmackDown tonight with the Bruiserweight Butch one-on-one -on -one with the Irish Devil, J.D. McDonough. These two men, no strangers to each other. They have clashed in the past, whether it's been on Raw, here on SmackDown, or in their days in NXT. J.D. McDonough wanted Tyler Bate tonight. Instead, he gets somebody who knows Tyler Bate extremely well. And the Bruiserweight, who's looking for a little joint manipulation in the early going in a pair of knees for J.D.'s troubles. J.D. McDonough wants to get back his opportunity to become the Cruiserweight Champion. Well, certainly the road to it. Not going to be an easy one to travel down. The Bruiserweight Butch obviously looking to carve his own path here on Friday Night SmackDown. And going through J.D. McDonough tonight, two weeks removed from a victory over the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. Certainly a way to continue to make some waves. As you mentioned, or as we mentioned earlier tonight, still to come in your main event, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes one-on-one. -on -one. 
with the Scot Scottish Warrior Drew McIntyre. Two all-stars of the Friday Night SmackDown brand set to clash with the events of last week. And I don't know, Cody Rhodes, man, he's got Guther coming up at SummerSlam. The World Heavyweight Championship is going to be on the line. It's been a rough couple of weeks for Cody. Laid out by McIntyre, put through the announce table two weeks ago by Guther. Cody Rhodes has got his work cut out for him tonight, but he is not going to take what happened last week on SmackDown lying down, challenging Drew McIntyre to a match tonight on SmackDown, and it will happen nonetheless. See what is to come later tonight in your main event here in Baltimore, but right now, J.D. McDonough has taken control in your opening contest. Maybe not for long, never turn your back. On the bruiserweight as McDonough gets set over the top rope. You know, Butch entered the grounds of the brawling brutes upwards of a year ago and certainly found success himself and Ridge Holland becoming world tag team champions at one point. The brawling brutes victorious back at WrestleMania, but ever since getting drafted to SmackDown, things have really not gone their way. And over the last few weeks, Butch may be reminded of what brought him to the dance, and that's coming out here to fight on his own. JD McDonough sending Butch down and out. As we look at what is still to come tonight on SmackDown as well, the prodigy rocks Sam Perez with some shocking actions last week as she ambushed the women's world champion Raquel Rodriguez. One of Raquel's close friends and the LWO's first lady, Zelina Vega, set to go one-on-one -on -one with the prodigy in just a bit here in Baltimore. So much riding on that matchup still to come here tonight. As we are talking about Butch and what he has accomplished, and maybe has yet to accomplish here in the WWE, it was two years ago where he made his main roster debut, became two-time Intercontinental Champion within those first 12 months, then joined the Brawling Brutes. Butch has had some success, whether it been on Raw or SmackDown. For NXT, United Kingdom Champion as well. I'll tell you what, no matter the past accolades, this is then, or that was then, this is now. And right now, Butch has got to focus on the task at hand. J.D. McDonough leveling the bruiserweight a few moments ago, but Butch back on the soles of his boots momentarily. Both of these men hungry for some opportunity here on SmackDown, but who is going to gain the victory and move one step closer towards it? Big strong boy Tyler Bate might have stepped out of the realm of the cruiserweight division last week to try to handle Drew McIntyre on behalf of Ilya Dragunov. Unfortunately, it was not to be, but when Tyler Bate is back in action, he is going to have several superstars gunning for his Cruiserweight Championship that he won at Money in the Bank. J.D. McDonough looking worse for wear right now as once again, Butch is looking to exact some of that Bruiserweight offense. Just a style that beats you down, damn near incapacitates you. One of the reasons why Butch has been so successful. No matter what brand he has been on here in the WWE. Butch looking to find his way back to the promised land. Find some championship gold here on SmackDown. A victory over JD McDonough may do just that. McDonough off the counter. And execute some well-timed forearms. And now Butch may be going for a ride inside out. The devil coming out to play. JD McDonough nearly defeating Butch off the devil inside. Well, it might not have gotten the victory, but it certainly created some distance that may give J.D. McDonough the moment he needed to recalibrate a game plan. Tope suicided to the outside, but there's Butch still in this matchup. And the Bruiserweight just tough as nails, and I'm sure has only gotten tougher over the last year being a part of the Brawling Brutes. Now Butch back in singles action tonight. J.D. McDonough on the receiving end of a beatdown on the outside of the ring, whether it's on the canvas or the floor of the CFG Bank Arena. Bruiserweight offense is going to hurt no matter what. Referee John Cohn at a count of six right now. Excuse me, referee Chad Patton at a count of six right now. Oh! I don't know if Butch is even listening. I think he's just soaking in the pageantry of his own beatdown that J.D. McDonough who gets sent right to those diamond-plated steps. Referees at a count of nine. McDonough's looking worse for wear. I think Butch just realized it. J.D. McDonough shake off the cobwebs. It's too late. Butch just stole the victory. Well, I don't know if Butch intended to get the win via count out tonight. 
heard the clock ticking and decided to hustle up. It pays him dividends. Sorry, JD. You've been counted out. Here is your winner. The Bruiser late with a huge victory here tonight on SmackDown. The Irish Devil going to have to go back to the drawing board as he tries to gain number one contendership for the Cruiserweight Championship of the world. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. We want to take you back to SmackDown last week in Manchester, New Hampshire. The Women's World Champion Raquel Rodriguez picking up the victory in a physical battle against Blair Davenport. Little inside out cradle right there, getting the one, two, three. Roxanne Perez seemingly coming out to the ring to celebrate with her former friend, I guess we should say, the Women's World Champion Raquel Rodriguez with the prodigy making her presence felt in more ways than one. Raquel's back turn and Roxanne making the most of the opportunity and bushing the champion. Well, Roxanne took to X earlier this week and had this to say. Roxanne Perez saying, I did not come to SmackDown to make friends. Ever since I was drafted, I've had one goal, become women's world champion. Sorry, Raquel, such is life and I want your title. The former NXT Women's Champion, Roxanne Perez coming for her stake here on SmackDown, but has she done enough to earn top contendership? The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making her way to the ring from Laredo, Texas. Well, Roxanne Perez could have easily waited for a number one contender matchup. Hell, she could have flat out asked Raquel Rodriguez and said, I want a shot at your gold. But the prodigy was out to make a statement last week, ambushing her now former friend Raquel Rodriguez from behind. And as we mentioned, staking her claim for the Women's World Championship opportunity. Whether you agree with the actions of Roxanne or not, you can't say she hasn't made waves over the last week and change on SmackDown. And really, Roxanne Perez has been turning a lot of heads ever since she was drafted to the blue brand back in April. Well, no matter Roxanne's recent actions, the first lady of the LWO and true close friend of Raquel Rodriguez, Zelina Vega stepping up to the plate tonight and looking to hit a home run, taking out Perez in the process. You know, all this talk about the Women's World Championship, but coming up a week from tomorrow at Saturday night's main event, brand new Women's Tag Team Champions are going to be crowned here in the WWE. More information following this matchup, but tune in live next Saturday night from Minneapolis, Minnesota on the road to SummerSlam. It is Saturday night's main event. Talking about the, about the Women's World Championship, you're looking at the first lady of the LWO, Zelina Vega, somebody who has had her crack at the gold in recent months, and I am sure would love an opportunity to get in the ring with her friend Raquel Rodriguez on a respectable term. Obviously the prodigy with different plans. And you know, it is funny looking back, Roxanne Perez drafted to Friday Night SmackDown in the month of April. The first time she emerged and walked down the aisle with that fist in the sky behind her was a part of a six-woman tag team matchup where she teamed up alongside Raquel Rodriguez. A little bit of a friendship was truly made on that night. We saw Roxanne Perez compete in the Women's World Championship number one contender eliminator back in the month of May and into June. Perez upset the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, in the opening round of that contest, and then EO Sky turning away Roxanne back at Super SmackDown in Mexico City. Perez obviously came close to becoming number one contender on that night. 
had another opportunity to gain a future championship opportunity. And Money in the Bank failed to obtain the briefcase, and it looks like Perez is now kicking down a different door. Number one contenders eliminator didn't go her way. The Money in the Bank contract did not go her way. Perez saw an opportunity, and she bid on it last week. But as we mentioned, as she was walking down the aisle, was attacking Raquel from behind enough to really not only get in the crosshairs and obviously light a fire under Raquel, but to truly see that Roxanne deserves a shot at the gold. And we talk about it all the time. Wins and losses matter around these parts. If you want to become number one contender, you got to earn it. And that's not to say Roxanne Perez hasn't been doing work on the blue brand, but Selena Vega looking for the victory tonight and looking to put the spotlight on the LWO. Zelina off the top with a tilt to whirl head scissors. And the prodigy not allowing a pinfall to be made. Got to commend the effort of Zelina Vega tonight. As we mentioned, and put some emphasis on a true friend of Raquel Rodriguez is Zelina Vega. We have seen them team up in the past as well. Several of times here on Friday Night Smackdown. Zelina Vega obviously with a bad taste in her mouth after she saw what happened last week. A hard fought victory for Raquel. Taking down Blair Davenport on SmackDown only for that celebration to be spoiled by the actions of Roxanne Perez. Nonetheless, we are here. We are live from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. Zelina Vega is bringing the fight to the former NXT Women's Champion. You know, Roxanne Perez was called up to the main roster last year as a part of the Monday Night Raw brand for upwards of 12 months and really did not see much success. Really started to turn things around before she was drafted to Friday Night SmackDown and credit where credit's due, win, lose, or draw. Perez has been on a tear one way or another here on the blue brand. But obviously not satisfied in her own results and decided to take a new route last week on SmackDown. Selena Vega coming to a dead end off that springboard moments again. Now Roxanne Perez looking to add some insult to injury. Going for a big time impaler DDT. And that may be all she wrote. Selena looking up at the lights at the CFG Bank Arena. However, Vega still in this matchup. So much opportunity is looming for the women's division, whether it's on Raw or SmackDown. Roxanne Perez and Selena Vega looking for their own tonight. Who's going to get this much wanted victory as Selena Vega starting to rev up the engines? Nice takedown. Wheelbarrow into the arm drag. Roxanne Perez feeling the front. Oof. I don't know if Roxanne wants to break things down to a brawl with Selena Vega. Perez may be second guessing those actions, and she may be second guessing the actions of last week. Raquel Rodriguez not allowing Perez to escape ringside. Well, the women's world champion has got to be feeling some type of way after she was ambushed from behind. Never saw it coming seven nights ago. Selena Vega with a couple of closed fists. Roxanne was looking to get the hell out of Dodge. The women's world champion throwing her back into the line of fire. Selena Vega wants her opportunity, but wants to do it the hard way. Scratching and clawing and earning victories. Roxanne Perez tried to take a shortcut last week and she finds herself in this predicament tonight. Wait a minute. Pop rocks on Vega. No denying the results that time. Roxanne Perez picking up a victory. Roxanne continuing to get W's on Friday Night SmackDown. W's equal opportunity. Opportunity could become gold. Here is your winner, Roxanne Perez. Well, we wait to see what is next between Roxanne Perez and Raquel Rodriguez. But we do know is that a week from tomorrow, the SmackDown and Raw superstars will be under the bright lights of the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The road to SummerSlam makes a pit stop for Saturday night's main event. And of course, the women's tag team champions will be crowned on that night, but who will be competing for the gold? As announced earlier this week, this coming Monday night in Chicago on Raw, Katana Chance and Caden Carter take on Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. The winners move on to Minneapolis.
What about next week on Friday Night SmackDown, 24 hours before Saturday Night's main event? Asuka teams up with the genius of the sky, EO Sky, to take on the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, and the Pitbull Zoe Stark. Who's going to move on to Minneapolis to compete for the gold? We find out next week. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity. Ever since winning the WWE Tag Team Championship, there has been a target on the back of Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar of the LWO. They turned away the challenge of Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, the Street Profits, back at the Great American Bash. Unfortunately, celebration was not to be, thanks to the emergence of Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo, who laid out the champions looking for their opportunity to take the gold away from the Latino World Order. Well, last week, Angel and Humberto in action against Nathan Frazier and Axiom, and nobody can deny the talents of these two generational superstars. Garza and Carrillo bringing the fight and picking up the victory along the way. Santos Escobar and Rey Mysterio willing to put their championships on the line if it means retribution. And coming up a week from tomorrow, at Saturday night's main event, the LWO will defend the WWE Tag Team Championship against Angel and Birdo, a tag team match for the Tag Team Gold, Saturday night, August the 3rd. Tag team action a week from tomorrow and tag team action live and in living color for the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore. This tag team matchup here on SmackDown brought to you by Velocity, which goes down each and every Wednesday only on the No Nation Gaming TikTok. Go ahead and scan the QR code on your screen right now. Be sure to hit the follow over on the No Nation Gaming TikTok, TikTok and don't miss a second of the action each and every Wednesday on Velocity. We almost got that out without a butcher. Nonetheless, we are inside Baltimore, Maryland in the CFG Bank Arena. Chad Gable has been hot on the heels of Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams as of late. You gotta believe Gable is eyeing up the United States Championship. After a victory over Trick last week, we come to tag team action tonight. An opportunity is really the word of the evening, it seems, as opportunity may be looming for Chad Gable of Alpha Academy. But victory is certainly easier said than done when you're in the ring with the up and coming Trick Williams and of course, the United States Champion. And their opponents at a combined weight of 415 pounds, the team of Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Carmelo Hayes defeating Ricochet to become the United States Champion back in Philadelphia at the Great American Bash edition of SmackDown. Trick Williams defeated Chad Gable one week later to qualify for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Last week on SmackDown, it was Chad Gable and Trick Williams in a rematch from that qualifier. Gable just looking to get back. And of course, contention and winning ways here on SmackDown. Gable picking up the big time victory last week. And ever since then, Gable Got a little twinkle in his eye towards the red, white, blue, and gold that is around the waist of Mello. This tag team matchup coming to, coming to be tonight here in Baltimore. Alpha Academy looking to keep their streak going.
There's been some great action tonight on SmackDown already. Of course, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, the number one contender for the World's Heavyweight Championship. Still set to meet the Scottish warrior Drew McIntyre in your main event tonight. Right here in his Alpha Academy, 2v2 against the Trick Mellow Gang. Otis looking to squeeze the life out of Trick in the early moments of this matchup. And Trick Williams got to feel a little bit of pressure on his shoulders. Coming up short to Chad Gable last week, and now this opportunity here tonight for Alpha Academy. Trick Williams not looking to, of course, fall short again and maybe be responsible for Carmelo Hayes having a new contender on his heels. All remains to be seen. Don't want to get any four drawn conclusions here. Trick Williams certainly showing an aggressive side right now, and you got to give credit to Trick. We talked about it back in Money in the Bank. Many people have dubbed this man a running buddy, a right-hand man for Carmelo Hayes, and somebody who's just been in the background for the United States champion. Just there to help him secure victory when it is needed. The Trick Williams showcasing in that first match around with Chad Gable, and of course the appearance at Money in the Bank that Trick has all the tools to stand on his own. Nonetheless, the Trick Melo gang, like brothers inside of that ring and, and outside of it. United States champion Carmelo Hayes obviously leans on Trick Williams when he needs to. But the same can be said, vice versa. Otis big time power slam to Carmelo Hayes that time. Otis, I'm sure, looking to help Chad Gable, somebody who has been very desperate, if you will, for championship shots at times, get back in a contention for one. You've seen Gable challenge for the Cruiserweight Championship in the last year, dating back to last fall. Alpha Academy have had their go-arounds for the WWE Tag Team titles here on SmackDown. But now Chad Gable itching to get his hands on Carmelo Hayes in one-on-one -on -one action. All right now, I don't think Melo can be can afford to worry about the future and an possible United States Championship defense. I don't know if he's breathing right now. Otis coming down on him like a ton of bricks. Oh no, a little tag team action by Alpha Academy that time. Chad Gable looking for victory. Trick Williams not going to allow it. Carmelo Hayes feeling the brunt of Master Gable and his number one guy. Alpha Academy, I'm sure, drew up many a blueprints. In this 2v2 matchup against a champion of his own right in Carmelo Hayes. Otis will continue to bring the power, and that he does. Carmelo Hayes, first time he has seen an in-ring competition since that physical battle with Ricochet back at the Great American Bash. Whether you like Carmelo Hayes' attitude or not, whether you agree with some of his underhanded tactics that him and Trick love to implore at times, nobody can deny the generational talent that Carmelo Hayes is. Some have called him a one of one. He refers to himself as him. Melo says he doesn't miss. And with the United States Championship around his waist, there may be no denying that he is a future main event star here on SmackDown. Melo didn't get all of that maneuver against Otis, but just got enough. He's got him down on the canvas, and that's what matters. That's where Melo can try to secure the three count. First 48 taken down Otis. Going for the pinfall there, but it's Chad Gable this time breaking up the pin. You know, we talk about Gable and how he's had his eyes on the United States Championship. Chad Gable even accepted an open challenge from Ricochet. Last month here on SmackDown, Ricochet's final successful defense of that goal before Melo reared his head. Chad Gable obviously itching for a crack. One more at championship gold. A win in this tag team scenario tonight could certainly be the way that Gable finds his way back to the promised land. Well, it remains to be seen. Carmelo Hayes not looking to allow it. I am sure Melo would like to avoid having to defend the United States Championship at any at all costs. Took him several months to obtain it here on Friday Night SmackDown. Mello looking to hold on to it for as long as possible and taking out Gable right there. Certainly going to aid him in doing that. Tag back to the right-hand man, Trick Williams. Trick and Gable starting to know each other very well. They've split the difference. One match apiece so far. 
Chad Gable taken down. Obviously, Trick with the size and strength advantage. Gable, however, always got to keep your eyes. Willing to take Chad Gable down, or willing to take Trick Williams, I should say, down to the mat if need be and start suplexing him from pillar to post. Trick going for the boot. Nobody to be home. Double underhook. Speaking of suplexes. Chad Gable, right back to where we were seven nights ago in Manchester, New Hampshire. Gable on top, at least momentarily. Belly to belly suplex. Trick Williams is gonna start seeing flashbacks. Chad Gable trying to take Alpha Academy to the next level here on SmackDown. The only way to do so is getting those Ws. Tag made to Otis. Wait a minute, could be seeing a little roll reversal this time. Now it's Otis in the press slam position and Chad Gable with the assist. And will that do it? Carmelo Hayes does not allow it. United States champion watched from ringside last week as Trick Williams fell down in a blades of glory to Chad Gable. And now with Melo involved in this contest, not looking to see Trick Williams go down once more tonight. Big time power moves by Otis right there. Might not have gotten the victory, but certainly a smart decision to stay on the offense. Otis send the Trick back into the corner. Oh no, Trick looking worse for wear. He has been thrown all around this ring tonight by Chad Gable and the man who is coming off the second big time splash by Otis. Carmelo Hayes looking on, nothing he can do. Alpha Academy at A plus on the test. Chad Gable relying on his right hand tonight. Otis secures the pinfall. Chad Gable continuing to climb the ranks, continuing to elevate Alpha Academy. What is next for this duo here on SmackDown? Randy Orton has been on a path of destruction here on Friday Night SmackDown. A path to simply remind the WWE Universe as well as the SmackDown locker room just how dangerous the Apex Predator still can be. We take you back to two weeks ago in London, England, where Randy Orton and the almighty Bobby Lashley's issues coming to a screeching halt with an RKO on the exposed concrete. Well, there's been some recent partnership, as you saw in the clip moments ago, with A-Town Down Under and the Viper himself. The Street Profits, buddies of the almighty Bobby Lashley, trying to do one good by the big man this past Wednesday night on Velocity. Austin Theory one-on-one -on -one with Montez Ford. You see all the superstars that loomed at ringside. Austin Theory picking up the victory in singles action 48 hours ago. When we look towards next week in the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines, Iowa, the Street Profits doing what they do best, 2v2 action, as they have challenged A-Town down under Randy Orton, seemingly going to be looming at ringside. Tag team matchup live next week on SmackDown. If you're feeling lost, sing this song with me. It will shine your light. A hope that you can say, Sing away,
Well, as we know, the great one, The Rock, set to be the special guest host of SummerSlam. But the last time we saw The Rock, he was struck with an RKO at the Great American Bash. Nonetheless, the most electrifying superstar will be in the house on August 17th, but also approaching at Ford Field. A match one year in the making between the Ring General, Gunther, and the King of the Ring winner, Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes defeated Gunther for the United States Championship last year at SummerSlam. Gunther has only gotten better since that day. Cody Rhodes has had a tumultuous 12 months since then. These two men lock horns all over again in just mere weeks. When Cody Rhodes challenges Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship. But right here, live tonight from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, the American Nightmare looks to settle the score with the Scottish Psychopath. I do not agree with Cody's decision to take this matchup just weeks before the biggest matchup of his career. But Cody Rhodes here to fight nonetheless, the number one contender for the World Championship, doing things his way. You know, two weeks ago in London, Ilya Dragunov was attacked backstage by Ludwig Kaiser. That seemingly ignited a brawl between Cody Rhodes and Gunther, which spilled out to the arena. Gunther put Cody Rhodes through the announce table, ensured that Cody would not be in the building 24 hours later when Dragunov meant Gunther for the gold. Cody Rhodes then emerging last week on SmackDown, trying to come to the aid of Tyler Bate and do one good by Ilya Dragunov after Drew McIntyre had incapacitated him back at Money in the Bank, and we saw how that went. It's been a rocky couple of weeks for the King of the Ring winner. But Cody Rhodes will not die on the sword of the Scottish Warrior if that's what he's got to do on the road to SummerSlam. There has been something different in the eyes of Drew McIntyre all year long, but especially over the last few weeks. Obsessed and damn near crippled by the fact that he could not win back the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania after losing it to Gunther last year at Survivor Series. McIntyre's obsession with the gold led him to falling short at the finish line against Roman Reigns, against Ilya Dragunov, and McIntyre finally snapping, taking his anger out on Dragunov. Back at Money in the Bank, we saw what he did to Tyler Bate, not even interested in victory last week, just wanted to incapacitate the Cruiserweight Champion. Whatever McIntyre's newfound goal is, it is spelling disaster for the SmackDown locker room in a hurry. Nonetheless, Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre set the lock horns to all stars of the blue brand in your main event. Well, Drew McIntyre heading to the outside of the ring off the bell, and I don't know what this tactic is against Cody Rhodes. Rhodes obviously take it back just as we all are, and it looks like McIntyre's added a new wrinkle to his repertoire. By wrinkle to his repertoire, I mean a little underhanded tactic just to try to throw Cody Rhodes off his game. You know, last year at this time, Drew McIntyre was all smiles, waving the flag of the blue brand loud and proud as the World Heavyweight Champion, one of the faces of WWE, no doubt about it, a champion that the rest of the locker room could be proud of. And I understand being frustrated, not only losing your World Heavyweight Championship last year that you worked so hard to obtain, and then failing to win it back in the main event of WrestleMania. I understand how heartbreaking that could be for McIntyre. 
But to let that obsession with the big gold belt come to this. Come to destroying members of the SmackDown locker room. Turning your back on the audience that supported you all this time. McIntyre has become a new man. And it is a man that Cody Rhodes is not a fan of. And he is looking to dish out some revenge on behalf of several superstars here tonight. Cody Rhodes locking in a little figure four. Trying to take out those tree trunk legs of McIntyre in the early going. Cody Rhodes has obviously befriended Ilya Dragunov, a healthy competition breeding that friendship. As the two men met in the semifinals of the King of the Ring tournament, they have fought alongside against Imperium here on SmackDown. I am sure Cody Rhodes watched from his hotel room in London, England on that night, nursing the injuries of 24 hours prior when he was put through the announce table by Gunther and saw not only a soul-crushing loss for Dragunov against the champion, but saw what McIntyre did afterwards and decided he wasn't going to stand for it. Unfortunately for Cody Rhodes, although his heart is in the right place, taking this matchup several weeks before he challenges Gunther in the biggest match of his career for the World Heavyweight Championship may not be the smartest idea. We see how unhinged Drew McIntyre has been as of late. For all we know, McIntyre has all intents and purposes of taking out Cody Rhodes tonight and freeing up the number one contendership for the world title at SummerSlam. All remains to be seen. This has clearly not been much of a wrestling match. This has just been a fight between the American Nightmare and the Scottish Psychopath. You had to expect nothing less. I don't think Drew McIntyre came to Baltimore tonight for collar and elbow tie-ups and wrist locks. Drew McIntyre looking to take out Cody Rhodes and make yet another statement. I mean, McIntyre wasn't even interested in victory last week against Tyler Bate, who tried to stick up for Ilya Dragunov. All Drew McIntyre wanted to do is send a message to the SmackDown locker room. And he certainly did just that. But right now, Cody Rhodes is sending his own message that you might have bit off more than he could chew. A little double underhook power bomb using McIntyre's own momentum against him. Cody Rhodes taking the fight back inside the ring. Chad Patton already counted out JD McDonough earlier tonight. I'm sure he's got no problem counting out Drew McIntyre. Look at McIntyre, not wasting his time getting back inside the ring. Whatever McIntyre's got in mind certainly cannot favor Cody. Look at that, just goaded in Cody Rhodes. Neck breaker and now right ribs first right of the announce table. Just where Cody Rhodes was lying in a wasteland two weeks ago by hands of the world heavyweight champion Gunther. McIntyre is just beating down Cody, and oh no, Drew's got a steel chair. We saw what happened last week. The chair to Tyler Bate. Oh, Cody catching that one, not allowing McIntyre to send this matchup a wire. Oh, but Drew may be hell bent on destruction. Cody Rhodes may regret taking this matchup tonight. Once again, McIntyre not even interested in victory tonight, only interested in the destruction of his colleagues. Steel chair to the number one contender for the world championship, but Cody Rhodes still with fight in him and is not looking to allow Drew McIntyre to lay his ass out for the second week in a row. Oh, Cody, he's risking injury, continuing to fight this battle. It may be best to let McIntyre walk away. Oh, no. Claymore kick on the outside. Second week in a row, third Claymore kick for Cody's troubles. Drew McIntyre is absolutely a different superstar than the man we once knew 12 months ago. Wait a minute! Ilya Dragunov from behind for the first time since Money in the Bank is here in Baltimore and he's making a beeline for Drew McIntyre. Just as McIntyre came through the audience and attacked Dragunov back in London, Ilya dishing a measure of revenge to the Scottish warrior here tonight. 
Be careful what you wish for. The man dragging his sword through the skies. Torpedo Moscow. Ilya Dragunov does not forgive. He certainly does not forget. He has beaten Drew McIntyre before, but this is a different Drew McIntyre that Ilya Dragunov has no respect for. McIntyre decided to kick Ilya while he was down after he already went through a war with Guther over the World Heavyweight Championship. Oh no, and now Dragunov goading McIntyre amongst the WWE Universe, surrounded by superstars and concrete. I don't know, Ilya Dragunov might have had McIntyre down off the Torpedo Moscow, but Dragunov is not done yet. McIntyre's trying to shake off the cobwebs. We have got a brawl on our hands between these two superstars, and you had to believe this was coming. Second Torpedo Moscow on the concrete floor. Ilya Dragunov back here on SmackDown and reminding Drew McIntyre that this man Dragon has still got fu- Oh no, wait a minute. Gunther now here at ringside. Cody Rhodes just trying to get to his feet. The World Heavyweight Champion trying to pick his bones. We are right back to where we were two weeks ago in the OVO in London. And we have got a brawl now between the American Nightmare and the World Heavyweight Champion weeks before they made it at SummerSlam in Ford Field. Gunther obviously trying to pick the bones of Cody Rhodes did what Imperium did to Ilya Dragunov and weaken the Man Dragon before the title was on the line. Guther and Imperium have certainly been acting just a little bit different throughout this summer, as if the walls are starting to close in. Cody Rhodes not looking to see a repeat. Guther clearing off the announce table. Cody Rhodes looking for an ounce of flesh. I don't think anybody wants to get between these two superstars. Guther looking to eliminate Cody. Cody out to measure some revenge tonight. Crossroads at ringside. The World Heavyweight Champion and his plan backfire. Oh my goodness, Guther starting to get to his feet. Cody Rhodes with his eyes on the announce table. The American Nightmare sending a message of his own, loud and clear, Guther through the announce table. Are we on the verge of history repeating itself? Will Cody Rhodes defeat Guther at SummerSlam and become the new World Heavyweight Champion?